Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to the Hauser Next Center here in Fort Myers, Florida. Happy to report that the office here, myself included, got another article in the scientific literature just published. So it's called cervical oculopathy. So that's a term that I described, you know, I came up with that term. It's basically oculopathy. Ocular is eye, pathy is pathology. So it's eye diseases that have a cervicogenic or cervical etiology. So this is kind of new. People know that like when you have computer vision syndrome or text neck that people can get blurry vision, right? So the thinking was always that it's related to the computer screen or somebody's too close to the computer screen or something, which absolutely can occur. This is separate from that. This is a breakdown of the neck curve when a person's hunched over a cell phone, the curve reverses, and when the curve reverses, that changes the neurology and the drainage of the eye. And then all of a sudden, you can get almost any eye condition. It doesn't take much to go from blurry vision to actually have visual loss, which I'll talk about. You, you wanna come in earlier rather than later. It's much, much easier to treat people before there's been optic nerve or significant damage to the eye. I've even seen people that have had retinal detachments. You know, obviously retinal detachment, you need to see an ophthalmologist, but if you keep having retinal detachments and they don't know why, you really should come here because you probably have cervical oculopathy, which is, which is at least as part of the pathology. The cervical spine etiology of visual symptoms and eye diseases, a hypothesis exploring mechanisms linking the neck and the eye. And it's published in MDPI. And then we have patient data that we described in this paper. And then my writing team decided, you know, this paper, we couldn't put everything we wanted to in that one. So we, we, call, we wrote what's called the long eye paper. And that's what the one in MDPI is. Now to summarize it, most of you know me from previous YouTube videos where I talk about when you have a reversal of the neck curve, you basically clog up the brain toilet. At nighttime, what's supposed to happen is the jugular veins are supposed to open up and then waste products from the brain get like a washing machine, whoosh, they go out of the brain into the circulation and get metabolized by the liver and the lymph system, but they have to get out of the brain. And you might say, well, why is there so much metabolic waste uh, or toxins in the brain? Well, it's from you guys looking on the computer and looking on your cell phone. Every time a neuron fires in your brain, and there may be up to five billion neurons in your brain. So that's five million cells pooping basically. They're pooping and pooping and pooping. For the first time in history in the last 30 years, 20 years, the human brain has been exposed to so much visual stimuli. So every time you search on the internet, you do gaming, all this stuff taxes the brain unbelievably and the waste products, the metabolic poop has to go out. The brain has to be cleaned. Well, basically the eye is the same thing. The eye drains in vain. So basically when you're doing all this visual activity, the eye cells are pooping too. When the jugular veins are blocked, the veins that drain the eye are also blocked or the pressure goes up in them. So the eye can't drain as good and it turns out with Alzheimer's and different neurodegenerative disorders, the metabolic waste products are first seen in the eye. Because remember, the eye is in your brain. The eye is part of the central nervous system. So when you get a blocked jugular vein, the brain can't drain, the eye can't drain, and then you get all kinds of eye diseases. Well, what are some of the eye diseases? Dry eyes, retinopathy, optic neuropathy, excessive tearing, papilledema, vitreitis, cataracts, eye pain, ocular migraine, amaurosis fugax, scleritis, retinal vasculitis, 
macular degeneration, ocular hypertension or glaucoma, retinal detachments, excessive pupillary dilation. So if you're somebody who has light sensitivity, like you couldn't be in front of these bright lights, then you really should get an evaluation for cervical oculopathy or cervical breakdown of the cervical curve causing eye conditions. So this wasn't in the long paper, but I just wanted to show you it. So you basically have a reversal of the neck curve. Fluid starts accumulating around the eye nerves. So that's why you get blurry vision or double vision. And then basically when the eye can't drain good, the pressure increases in the eye. So imagine an eye that has high eye pressure, the metabolic waste products can't get out. So of course you can get cataracts, you can get macular degeneration, you can get breakdown of the blood ocular barriers, which of course can screw up the eye by many, many mechanisms. So in the long eye article, cervical oculopathy in MDPI, we explain that when you look down at a cell phone excessively, the ligaments in the neck get stretched out, and then eventually the vertebrae move excessively, and that starts causing compression of the vagus nerve, which can degenerate the vagus nerve. It can stimulate the sympathetic system, so you get sympathetic hyperactivity, thus you get really big pupils, and that changes the eye structure in a way that, again, the eye can't drain good. This is Karina checking somebody's optic nerve. This is a normal optic nerve sheath diameter, and this is somebody who it's twice as big. So the twice as big, when you see this, it just means that there's excessive fluid around the eye nerve. And think about, you see because the image of what you're looking at gets transmitted by an electrical cable from your eye to the back of your brain, the occipital lobe and that's through the optic nerve. So imagine that cable system has all this pressure on it because of all this fluid, because of the jugular vein's block, well, of course you're gonna get blurry vision. Or the image that you're looking at might get to the occipital lobe slower on your right side than your left side, so then you see two images, or it's blurry images, or you close your eyes and then you still see the image because what you're seeing, it's getting transmitted so slowly to your brain and you don't see an object till the brain interprets it as an object, right? Block jugular vein and basically when there's excessive fluid around, let's say one optic nerve versus another, the image here gets to the brain slower than on this side. So then of course you get a blurry, you get a blurry image. So if you have blurry vision, I would definitely tell you to come here and get an evaluation because again, it's a progressive disorder. But basically because of the forward head, the jugular vein gets blocked and all kinds of things happen, including excessive pressure on the retina. So you can get all kinds of retinal diseases, you can get floaters, you start seeing lights, all these things are a sign that there's the accumulation of toxic inflammatory substances in the eye. And then this explains that it starts out with a person looking down at a cell phone, they get ligamentous cervical instability, eventually the carotid sheath gets compressed, this elevates the eye pressure, fluid accumulates around the eye nerve and eventually the nervous system and there's various reasons why the nervous system to the eye kind of gets screwed up and then the pupils dilate excessively. When the pupils dilate excessively, it changes the fluid flow out of the eye so the eye has even a harder time of getting rid of the toxic metabolic inflammatory substances and you get what, what we termed ocular dysautonomia. Now in the office we actually check the pupils, how big the pupils are. We have a pupillometer and then we subject the pupils to light and then we monitor this over a, the treatment course. Is the ocular dysautonomia getting better? Is the eye pressure getting better? We've had young people, you know, over 30 eye pressure when a good eye pressure is like 12. 
you know, 10 to 15 is normal. So it's not normal for somebody to be 24 and they have an 18 eye pressure or a 22 eye pressure. And what's often wrong is that there is cervical oculopathy, that the cervical spine structure is breaking down and it's causing havoc on the drainage of the eye. So you have ligamentous cervical instability, causes a breakdown of the cervical curve called cervical destructure. The vagus nerves gets degenerated. There's sympathetic hyperactivity, and ultimately you can get spasms of the ophthalmic artery. So if you get migraine headaches or occasionally your vision goes to nothing, you're probably getting spasms of your ophthalmic artery because of this. The treatment then is you gotta restore the autonomic nervous system function to normal in the eye. Well, to do that, it may be that you have to go to a place that knows about this and also can instruct you on how to get your neck structure normal. And if you have clicking, popping, grinding in your neck, you may need prolotherapy. So excessive pupil dilation often causes light sensitivity called photophobia. Occasionally I'll see somebody where the pupils go like this, that's called pupillary hippus. That's part of the same process. You can get blurry vision, eye fatigue, and of course the eye pressure can go up. So we check your jugular veins and your vagus nerves in different positions. We can do it at one position in the neck or a different position in the neck, and we can also change the position that your neck's in. So people are like, no, 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 the eye doctor, they found that my eye pressure is normal. Yeah, occasionally it might be normal, but a person might be getting spikes of high eye pressure depending on the structure of their neck or the position of their neck, right? So somebody might rotate their head to the left, that might cause an obstruction of the internal jugular vein, then over the course of an hour, the eye pressure might go way, way up. And this is a more uh, explanatory uh, image about the various steps that normally occur, that a person has a breakdown of the neck curve, the jugular vein gets compressed, you start causing an increase in the cerebral spinal fluid pressure, and then ultimately that whole process starts up where you get eye pollution. I just call it eye pollution. So the eye, like the brain, has to get rid of the toxic metabolic waste products or the pollution. And the eye also gets cleaned during the night. So again, if a person's not sleeping in a position where the jugular veins are open or they have such a bad neck curve that even when they lay down, even if they extend their neck, sometimes the jugular veins don't open up. So they have to do work on restoring the neck curve. So eye and visual symptoms are common when you have ligamentous cervical instability or destructure. Excessive tearing, eye pain, focusing problems, redness, visual snow, right? That's a big one where a person looks and it's almost like you're in a snowstorm or there's excessive glare. Consider that it might be actually a musculoskeletal problem and not an eye primary eye problem. And then, you know, some of the recommendations are gonna be, you know, stop doing this. Uh, you know, if you're gonna look down at your cell phone, have your neck extended, get prism glasses. And then sometimes you, you need chiropractic adjustments, laying on a dental dental pillow, raise your computer height. And of course, sometimes you need prolotherapy. You do prolotherapy in the injured ligaments. The most common ligaments that cause eye problems are ligamentous C1, C2 facet joint instability. So the C1, C2 facet joints, those are the capsular ligaments. So people are supposed to have a normal or lordotic curve. When you have a good curve, the jugular veins open, the vagus nerves are fine. When the cervical curve breaks down, you get a reversal of the curve, compression of the jugular vein, and injury to the vagus. So we do structural analyses. We do motion x-rays. That's what's going on here. We also do a 3D image uh, of the neck, and then we look for instability. So this person had multi-level instability. When they were flexing, the vertebrae went like that, or in the open mouth view, this person had over set. In other words, the C1 
overhang the C2 by over seven millimeters. So it means the C1 was moving in a way that was seven millimeters too much in a certain direction, and that can kink the vertebral arteries, that can block the cerebral spinal fluid, that can block the jugular veins. So we do a comprehensive analysis called neck vitals. We do eye pressures, we do pupillometer, we look at the optic nerve, the vagus nerve, jugular vein, and we can do it in multiple, multiple locations. This just shows you jugular vein open, jugular vein partially closed, jugular vein totally closed. And then this helps tell what might be the problem. So when somebody is in supine, like say they lay down and they have a bunch of pillows, so their neck's flexed and um, the jugular veins are all closed in that position. Well, it might be that they have styloid, excessively long styloid bones that are compressing the jugular. So, so occasionally somebody needs a styloidectomy, but normally what it is is that uh, because of the breakdown of the neck curve, when they're laying on their back, the jugular veins are closed off. But when they put their neck in a certain position, especially in the lateral decubitus position, the jugular veins open. So compressed jugular vein causes the episcleral veins not to be able to drain. And then of course you can get all kinds of things, including dry eye disease, which is becoming more and more prevalent. When someone doesn't have diabetes or they don't have high blood pressure and they eat relatively well and they have all kinds of eye pain, redness, dry eyes, uh, scratchy feeling, blurry vision, trouble focusing, or they always feel like they're on a boat, kind of like lightheaded all the time, especially when they're in a car. These are all signs of cervical destructure or ligamentous cervical instability. And especially if somebody always has neck tension, head pressure, clicking, popping, grinding in the neck, it's likely the eye symptoms are related to the neck. And at the Hauser Neck Center and Caring Medical Center in Fort Myers, Florida, we're specialists in this and how the neck causes eye problems. And honestly, eye problems are definitely in the top five of symptoms we see. Because anybody who has blurry vision or they can't process visual input correctly, it is awful. And it's a progressive disorder. So we take it, I take it very, very serious when people come in and the results we get, you know, are just tremendous or they're just tremendous. Now, sometimes it takes six months, it takes a year, but the improvement typically is gradual and it doesn't take a person long to realize like, oh my gosh, a month or two into it, my vision definitely is getting better. So if this pertains to you, I, we hope to see you soon.